You must be the famous Pepper Potts. Indeed I am. After all these years, Tony still has you picking up the dry cleaning. I do anything and everything that Mr. Sark requires, including occasionally taking out the trash. Will that be all? Hello and welcome back to Stark Contrast, where we discuss the differences and similarities from Marvel Comics to their MCU counterparts. And we're your hosts, Jeffrey. And I. Hello, hello, and welcome back. WB. We are back. We're back. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. What's up, Jeff? The same old, (laughs) same old. We're melting in California. Yes, the heat has definitely kicked up here. Yeah. Uh, in LA. Yep. Um, I was dying today. I'll say that. I stepped <laughs> outside and I was like, I thought I was burning. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm melting. Yeah. So that was, I was just, I think I, I opened because I had to leave. I opened the garage when I was leaving and I, the first thing out of my mouth, I was like, God, what the hell? I was like, Ew. <laughs> just imagine that every day. Climate change, baby. That's why I stay inside. Yeah. And also we gotta, we gotta take care of the earth, y'all. Not oh, to yeah. get all green on everybody, but you know. Yeah. Please. I'm <laughs> like, wow, I wish it, I missed when it was at 75. I know. It was gross. Well, and it was just 75 like the other day. That's what I'm, I know. Yeah. Well, you know what? It could be worse because we don't have the humidity. Yeah. Like our friends I'll on the that. east. I'll take that. Humidity is even worse. Right. Well, in lighter news, the Deadpool cameo list right off the top here, it's kind of insane. I At one point, there were so many. That's on Twitter and that threads. It's getting authenticated by yeah. like legit sources. I was like, wait a minute, are they are they real or are they messing with us? Like it's so weird. I mean, like full disclosure and spoiler alert, but like I first I saw like Gambit and then I saw Professor X and Magneto, but like the OGs, not not Fast Bender yet. And McAvoy, yeah. Those just got confirmed that they're not going to be. Oh, they did. Oh, okay. actually, oh, yeah, from from a, from, a, from a known leaker. Yeah, he said like they're definitely not. Uh, it. I wanted Fastbender. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll get Fastbender eventually. But I mean, like, I when I saw those but the two, fact that we know this yeah, information, I was is like, kind of insane. What? And then of course, Elektra, who was joining Ben Affleck's Daredevil. And yeah, at one point, to maybe you and like five other people, I was like, yeah, I'm just waiting for Colin Farrell at this point. Just waiting. I'm just so bullseye. <laughs> But how much, like, what's the budget for this? <laughs> I mean, at this point, also, I mean, they'll probably give him whatever he wants. But I think that he's also willing to just pony up his own money just to put I also think he has great out. relationships with these people. I agree. I completely yeah. agree. Reynolds is insane, but in the best way. So, yeah. And then they, of course, you know, just very recently released uh, the, the unofficial official image of of Hugh Jackman in a classic blue and yellow suit, Everyone's which is excited. 20 years in the making, my friend, like legitimately so many of my generation quote yeah. unquote are like, never thought we'd see the day. Didn't realize like how many people were like, I know. finally, you know who I'd really like, wow. like to see though is James Marsden. <laughs> oh my God. Do he's it. not, he's not out, not out, out of the picture. Yeah, I mean, they can't reveal everything. So, but you know, it, the, the list is growing and growing. And, and I hope they kind of pump the brakes because like, you know, someone made a good point. We didn't know about cameos until after the movies came out before. And now we're a year ahead. I think every, yeah. And like, uh, uh, something I've noticed of like, like people just love, love now. Like they want to know like the movie before yeah. you see the movie for some reason, like yeah. who's in it at least. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like people like we become such a, a, a society of like the first to know immediacy. And, and it's like, mm-hmm. God, yeah. like I remember going to a movie and like, you're kind of like, what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. People still just want that, that little blurb and like that hit. And they're like, Ooh, yeah. I want to know before everything else. Yeah. I want to make my decision and, and decide yes. Or I hate it. Which is what a lot of people do, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, even like when I see like, and I, I, I mean, this is maybe my fault because I follow, I don't follow him, but he gets recommended cause, um, to my feed a lot, especially on Twitter because, you know, I interact with it because yeah. like, because you know I me, mean, I'm still a curious cat, but I'm also kind of like, 
hmm, do I wish I read that? But I'm also kind of like, yeah, well, <laughs> screw it. Like when I see the movie, because it, it look, because my thing is, no matter how, what, what I read or whatever, yeah. it's always going to look different yeah. on the screen. Sure. But you know, for what it's worth, maybe it does lose flair because maybe I do remember see it, see it coming, mm. and I'm like, ah, yeah, okay, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm also kind of like intrigued by it. I'm like, how do you? Yeah. How do you get this source? Oh, well, you know, it always happens, right? It's part of the system. It's part of the the biz. That like, are you? A, yeah. They like, wanted, are you an industry plant? They want they want to garner the interest or get feedback. Yeah. Like, and it, you know, related to the topic, um, it's not unlike them leaking that test footage for Deadpool. You know, you never know what's <laughs> real, what's not. Everyone was so fascinated and like enamored. They're like, it's so good. It can't be real. Yeah. And then it was like, haha, we did it. I mean, super side tangent because different universe like James Gunn's like Superman legacy is mm-hmm. they're having Vanity Fair pieces on like who's getting, getting cast as cast, those yeah. official. And I'm like, damn, like, why is that like a thing now? Like, I don't it's remember wild, right? ever. May- maybe, you know. Actually, well, yeah, like when Chris Hemsworth announced his sure. Thor, or, but but it's like, like that's like a thing now. It's like that. Like you need to find out like who's playing what. Yeah. Yeah, it's and very it's interesting. Like, like you said, people just want to know. They want to get ahead of it. And it's just the, it's the whole cycle. Sometimes I wish. It's unavoidable now. Yeah, sometimes I miss being just out of the loop. Analog. And it's just, it's just the evolution, right? Of technology and the internet and everything there's just so much like info that you have to take in it's mm-hmm. kind of overwhelming yeah i literally had a moment <laughs> this morning where because the first thing i do in the morning and this is probably horrible and the worst thing to do i check my phone and then i make i was making my coffee and i was just felt overwhelmed because like because <laughs> there's so much information you tapped on t- out already like on, t- on top of like yeah. my drinking my coffee yeah i was just like overwhelmed with just information whether sure. it was like complex like a yeah uh, a movie thing a music yeah. thing and i was yeah. like oh my god oh my god yeah. oh my god yeah trailers being like there's trailers like yeah they drop like, so early now yeah like, oh my god i gotta i gotta watch every and i'm like whoa <laughs> whoa yeah i used to do that i used to be the immediate phone person and i was like you know what can't do it because yeah i I'll, i will get immediately tapped out and i'll be like man now i gotta do this for nine more hours yeah because it's like if i for don't money <laughs> because if i don't like do it i it's hard for me to get out of bed my alarm went my alarm went off this morning and i was like damn i don't want to get up oh, right now no. but i know if i close my eyes yeah, it's over. I'm, I'm, I'm out of there <laughs> and i need to work oh man <laughs> uh, you gotta get up and at him friend i know uh, um in other news so i saw rogers that's right and people were asking for my review and let's hear it I, yeah, I don't think it's worth like a whole full fledged episode. So I'll just mention it now. But yeah, um, it's it's fantastic. It, it's nothing like I expected it to be. It's it's definitely more than what we saw in Hawkeye, for instance. Like that song is clearly in the musical. Yes. It's so funny because it's exactly the same. The entire routine is exactly the same from soup to nuts. And so I thought it was going to be like a huge parody thing, but really it isn't. It's it's kind of taking a page out of the Aladdin musical if you have that context, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just taking all of the important moments in Steve Rogers' life and putting it in a musical form. Wow, that's crazy. It's crazy. very tasteful and very good. Like Dang. it's because it, on Hawkeye they portrayed it as like it was so cheesy and awful, but when you see this musical, it's it's legit it's legit (laughs) i was like i didn't think they could do it and they did it and it's it's quite marvelous and i cry a few times i've seen it twice and i cried a few times because i don't know something like i've said this before peggy carter makes me cry there's something about peggy carter but and she has like two songs in this musical oh my gosh yeah and bucky barnes is in it like there's all this contextualizing that they added and then also extracted because like how we were joking like oh wouldn't it be funny if they put all the avengers movies they do but in in a sweeping suite that it kind of just kind of goes through it quick enough that you understand what's happening but that's you don't cr- need to see it replayed that's crazy yeah it's it's really fantastic how long so was it? like 30 it's minutes? only 30 minutes long Jeez. but it feels like it's so much longer in a good way oh my so so definitely highly suggest it there is a bit of tactic into getting into it if you want to have the full experience and and so i made a twitter thread about it 
But long story short, there's a VIP experience you can get. You got to be there just as it opens. You have to be there before the rope drop, which is awful. It's a 7.30 call and they sell out within 30 minutes. 7.30? Yeah. And they sell out for the entire day in that's in 30 minutes flat. And so if you want to do that, you can do that. They have a standby line. They have a virtual queue that opens at 10.30 every day. Um, so depending on which route you take, it could be as simple or as difficult as you want. <laughs> but it is a very good musical. And I think I think you will enjoy it a lot, Jeff, as a Cap fan. Uh, yeah. One day. One day. Um, and then uh, we're nearly at the end of Secret Invasion. Um, so we just passed uh, the, the halfway mark and episode four just newly streamed. So, um, you know, it goes without saying on our next episode, which happens to be mini Marvel number 10, um, we're going to just talk all about the season finale. So the, the season in its entirety, we'll just recap the entire thing. Yes. I know that we've, we've <laughs> very freshly and almost unintentionally, um, you know, did character studies on both Rhodey and Nick, but what a what a great way to kind of tie it all together by doing a secret invasion mini. Uh, so yeah, so we'll talk about it all then, um, and that and, and whatever else pops up during San Diego Comic Con next yes. week, which is also where insane. die will be. I can't believe it's already next week. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be very interesting interesting scape because there will be no studios and and um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But so uh, the Marvel Spider Man. Um, the the Sony uh, PlayStation game uh, does have a panel, so uh, that's something. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. Um, and then in completely unrelated um, news, well, more or less, as Bucky Barnes here plays with his favorite ball, huh. like a maniac, uh, we're officially on YouTube. So you know, we've kind of bit the bullet. Uh, we're we're doing the automated thing where um, RSS is creating these uh cool videos for us just as we uh publish all of our episodes so we're slowly rolling out our entire catalog on there if you're more of a youtube person please go check it out and subscribe if you'd like or give a few likes Play on it some... in the background yeah um so that's there for you and same handle as everywhere else strkc and trst or just look up a stark contrast it should show up and also, we're on um, threads as well as streaming on Pandora and Sirius XM. If so, you guys use that sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, we're all on, on all those platforms. So, even more content to digest or under digest or over digest. Um, so, that said, I guess we can roll into our, our official episode. Um, we're not experts, we don't claim to be. We're just a couple of nerds nerding out. Yup. And in this particular character study, we will be examining Virginia Pepper Potts, uh, known to many from the Iron Man lore. Woo! So, let's get it going. Created by Stan Lee, Robert Bernstein, and Don Heck, Pep made her first appearance in Tales of Suspense number 45, cover dated September 1963. Oh wow! So she has come a very long way. Um, Jeff, do you do you remember how much the nineteen sixties comics go for? It's pretty early days. Early days. I want to go twelve. Ooh, twelve cents! Yes, <laughs> yes! <laughs> my time has arrived. <laughs> Back in the game, baby. <laughs> And so uh, this, again, Tales of Suspense is not unlike um, Strange Tales where they kind of put several stories of different characters together mm -hmm. in one issue. And so Iron Man and his newfound company uh, take the helm with this issue. And so you can see on this cover, they're, they're very much highlighted, the two of them. And it is Pepper and it is Happy Hogan, huh. funny enough. And they're being attacked by this new adversary being introduced named Jack Frost. That's okay. <laughs> 1963, baby. Um, yeah. And so we'll, we'll discuss a little bit later. But um, <laughs> it's so funny. I love the nostalgia, dude. This is why Silver Age is the best. So um, I scoured Shortbox 
there is no graded copy of this on that particular selling platform. So it's all eBay this time around. And so the highest I found on eBay was a CGC 7.0. And this is kind of a surprising price point for Pepper because I feel like, I mean, maybe it's because Happy Hogan also made his debut in this issue. So it's a twofer. Uh, okay. um, but it uh, a 7.0 goes for about 2500 And then uh, the oh lowest. Gosh. Yeah, it's, it's still a big chunk of change. The lowest I found was a CGC 4.5. Um, and you can snag that for 200 bucks. So if you just want their first appearance... There it is. Um, and then you can get a loose copy. Uh, you know, it's not so great <laughs> for about 75 bucks. You got to remember, 1963 is a long time ago. <laughs> if you still have stuff from 1963. Mm-hmm. I mean, God bless you, but oh my gosh. Yeah, you're not only like basically 70, um, but but yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's wild. So, so yeah, you can get a, a pretty yeah decent copy. Not great for about 75 bucks. Um yeah, and so it's that's it's simple as that, really. Um, first exposure? Is there any need to question I mean, that? It's got to be. It's got to be Iron Man, right? Yeah, number one. Yeah, uh, me. I knew her, but not nearly to the degree mm-hmm. that we're introduced to her. Um, which, of course, you know, is is kind of like the story with a lot of these characters they kind of emerge from the comics even if they had like a tiny tiny role initially yeah and we're, we're gonna get into a couple of those down here actually that we we didn't originally explore in our iron man episode which was, by the way is number one so Woo! it's taken us 59 episodes to get to uh to pepper but but yeah we're gonna be revisiting some of those characters too which is great because i know like iron man is clearly one of your faves if not the fave um, Can I tell you my favorite Pepper Potts moment or yeah. one of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's First Avengers, where Phil Coulson comes up to the Stark Tower, mm-hmm. and then she's oh. and then she's like, <laughs> "Bill, yeah." And uh, his name's not Phil. His first name's Agent. Yeah. And then they go out to talk. Then they go away to talk, and they're like, "I thought we we're having a moment. I was having twenty percent of the moment, twelve percent of the moment." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, it's so good." The twelve percent lives on. Right? Like every time anybody hears twelve or twelve percent, twelve percent, we Tony. think of that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic moment. Um, yeah, and so uh, while I have three digital cards of Pepper and her alias Rescue, um, none of them have character profiles in them and i don't have any actual cards so thankfully we have this new mini book uh to come to the rescue and so her uh character overview says longtime love of tony stark pepper potts ascended from executive assistant to ceo of stark industries her close association with iron man led to injuries that forced stark to save pepper's life by melding her body to modified cybernetic iron man armor since then, she has continued to aid Iron Man as the armored rescue. So, a lot of familiar stuff floating around in that little blurb. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one key difference in that he fused her, he fused armor to her body. Ah. Uh. So, we'll get into it, but it's very much like the arc reactor on Tony. Yes. Same thing. Yeah. Just on Pepper. And so that's the comic book version. Um, but yeah, so so we'll get into it right here. Um, in the comics, we're first introduced to Pepper in uh, Tales of Suspense. And funny enough, they, they made a typo. So it's not even a typo because you got to remember, all this stuff was done analog. It was done by hand. The person drawing who <laughs> wrote Kitty as her name even though oh, wow. it's pepper yeah and so it's a gigantic like it's which is unfortunate because it's the very first panel that she's actually in the comic so it's it's her first appearance but not her first appearance but they regard her uh. as, pe- as as kitty um even though she's clearly pepper and for the rest of the issue it's pepper as it should be but, huh. um and so yeah it's just a simple typo like i have this um reproduction page from an x-men issue in in my room and um, you can see very clearly. I'm, I can't remember who the uh, the letterer was at the time, but you know, again, they're doing it by hand. Yeah. And so you see that the the dialogue changed, and they just put white out on top of it, and then rewrote it. And so maybe they didn't correct this in modern ages, but 
that's usually the, the, the thing that they would do is just kind of, eh, you know, they, it's not like a computer. They don't, don't just digitize it. Yeah. They had to physically like erase it and stuff. So they didn't do that here. I don't know why. Maybe they just said whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, Pepper is introduced as Tony Stark's secretary of sorts. And so um, she's also introduced with Happy Hogan, like I mentioned. Uh, and despite Happy's best efforts, they don't get along so well. So you know that really awful <laughs> like accent, New York accent that we've done in the Daredevil hundreds, episodes? Hundreds of times, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that is kind of tonally how happy sounds in the comics, at least to me, <laughs> from a reader's perspective, because he's he's very much um you know, like described as like a boxer, a former boxer. Mm. And I think they actually talk about that. I think they did. In the that's, movie, um, yeah. That's number two. Yeah, and because that's why he's so, it's why he's got such a presence the way he does. Rule number one, yeah. never take your eyes off. <laughs> yeah, because he has also that entire scene with Natasha. Yes. Uh, or Natalie Rushman <laughs> in the ring. And so every time I read these panels, <laughs> I think of the accent, which is really awful. Just a horrible New York accent. It's just accent. so awful. He has a, how'd not, you like that? I flip over attempt, doll. I'm not even going to attempt to react. <laughs> Come to, on, do it. To, do it. And so anyway. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really bad. Mm, I got a picture. It's him. Stock. Who makes you tick a go thump, thump, right? Well, because I think, like, oh it, It's just like, how else would you do it? And so immediately, Happy is, so bad. is kind of uh, attracted to Pepper. Uh-huh. And Pepper's like, you know what? No, I am destined to be the the first or next Mrs. Tony Stark. Like she she has aspirations for Stark. Um, so it it turns into an immediate love triangle. It's interesting because you don't really get like Pepper Pot. Oh, sorry, you don't really get Pepper Potts from the the, the panel, right? It's kind of like she's kind of got brownish. Yeah, blonde hair. Just like and, a regular person. Yeah, but <laughs> the whole Pepper idea is that her she's peppered with freckles uh, and then they kind of amalgamated it later on with giving her red hair she's fiery like a pepper redheads man <laughs> just just say shaking his head <laughs> just too on the nose <laughs> it's very on the nose yeah so she's she's kind of one of those characters that i think took it with her along the way right like they they, they tried to make it a little better and you know we'll talk about that eventually but you know, in this issue, you know, it, it revo- revolves around um, a doctor named Shapanka. I should have looked. What you Shapanka. Shaka Khan. Is it Shaka? <laughs> Shaka Khan. Shasha Shaka Khan. Um, no, it's Doctor Shapanka. Okay. It just see. It's just weirder to actually say out loud. I've read it a million times, but he's a scientist who um, is essentially one of the many scientists that work for Stark Industries, uh-huh. and um, he's soon revealed to be stealing the information the research and he's outsourcing it selling it to other buyers and so um when <laughs> when tony realizes this you know they ha- they go toe to toe and things get a little ugly it's later that shapanka becomes an adversary to stark and he wants to get his revenge on both tony stark and iron man and you got to remember the, these are the days that they're two different separate people. Yes, they're separate people. Yes. So none of the characters know that he's both. It's full of the tropes of like, I have to leave the room, like without them realizing that I'm Iron Man. <laughs> and he's putting on the, each piece of armor <laughs> from his brief. It's so hilarious. It's so funny that it, I mean, considering you know like how far it's come, but um, so so yeah, Sherpanka becomes uh, this adversary, Jack Frost. Who, who I like compared to Iceman or even Mr. Freeze, which is funny because I think Mr. Freeze didn't come out till like 20 years after this character, mm. but they're very similar in, in, a, in a few ways. And so naturally, Iron Man, not Tony Stark, saves the day and the three of them just kind of carry on in this trio sort of slapstick way throughout their entire classic tenure. Love so it. it's always... Happy is is trying to get to Pep, but Pep is trying to get to Stark, and Stark's like, I don't give uh, <laughs> about anybody except for Tony Stark, right? Yeah. He doesn't care. Um, and so it's it's not until um, like 
45 years later, almost more than 45 years later, that Pepper actually becomes the rescue character that we've we've mentioned at the oh, top wow. of the show. So she she throughout the course, like like many of these sub characters, they come in and out. Like they're there for a very long time. Yeah. And once the storyline gets a little stale, or they realize, oh, we can't really do anything. They just kind of don't put them anywhere. <laughs> then they bring them back for a minute and they're like, oh, let's see how it goes. And then they do the bump up. So it took them 45 years to do that Such with Pepper. Such a long time. Why? Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's more than half half the comic books, right? Existence. Um, and so, yeah, so so for more than 45 years later, um, she makes her debut as Rescue in The Invincible Iron Man number 10, cover dated May 2009. From a 1963 debut, which oh. is like, yeah. oh my gosh, wow, it took the them timing that long. of that, wow. Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. And you've caught on to that date <laughs> because when was Iron Man 1 released? 2008. Mm-hmm. So they were working on it, more than likely working on it concurrently with the, with the film. And so they're like, well, Pepper Potts is going to be relevant again. What can we do? And also preparation for what happens to her in the third movie. It's all part of the 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 wheel, man. It's all Gosh. part of the wheel of fate. Just milking it. <laughs> yeah, they they know how they, it's the marketing scheme of schemes. Um and thankfully in this case, like like many of the other characters like, you know, Spider-Gwen is a great great example that they've they've given them a glow up mm-hmm. where she's no longer just the secretary that's being, you know, like pursued by the friend yeah she's and she's more than just a love interest she's actually a heroine of her own um and so when it comes to pepper becoming rescue to begin with the incident is best described at the top of rescue number one um which came out in 2010 another pretty recent comic oh, yeah. as, as far as things go um and it says pepper potts was critically injured in a terror attack targeting her boss tony stark to save her life tony implanted a repulsor device in her chest like his own and when presented uh when he presented her with her own suit of stark tech armor pepper became the hero called rescue so so yeah so during this event um you know like like he does in the films, Stark has all these subdivision industries across the globe. And so in particular, there was a Stark Dynamics um, location in mm-hmm. Taipei. And so uh, there's an event and Pepper's there doing her thing because Iron Man isn't there. And then, uh, or rather Tony Stark is in there. And then the attack happens. She's left in critical condition. And it happens to be a man named Ezekiel Stain. 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 Mm-hmm. Who, okay, continue. Who is the son of Obadiah Stain? Obadiah. St- I, I was thinking Stone for some reason. <laughs> no. Obadiah Stone. Abad, Abad, Obadiah, Ezekiel, and I forgot his his father's name. Edediah. It's like you know. It's so interesting. <laughs> Edediah. Edediah. Yeah. <laughs> the Hatfields and the McCoys. Um, and so anyway, yeah, he's the son of Obadiah Stane in the comics. And Obadiah Stane, of course, is the Iron Monger who is in Iron Man 1 portrayed yes. by Jeff Bridges. So that that character's son basically nearly kills her. Tony comes to her rescue, no pun intended, implants the RT thing in her chest, and she oh, then wow. becomes her own version of Iron Man. Um, so we'll we'll get to that in a minute. But yes, Virginia Pepper Potts portrayed by... Gwyneth Paltrow. Woo! <laughs> First seen in 2018's Iron Man, directed by... 2008's. 2000, what did I say? 2018. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 2000... Ah, oh, because I'm looking at the next line. 2008's Iron Man, directed by Jon Favreau and Shane Black. Last seen... Can you believe it's already been four years since we've seen Pepper Potts? Avengers Endgame. Four years. Really? It's been four years. Came out 2019. 19. Yeah. Ew. Isn't that weird? That's a whole year of, a whole tenure of high school. <laughs> yeah. It's gross. Wow. That seems a lot longer it's when you say it like gross. that. That's so crazy. But like time, right? Just like, no pun snap, intended with that. Nice. Yeah, I get right? The, I get I the reference. <laughs> Just like. She's out here thanos it up. <laughs> ah, man. And so, you know, of course, Pep appeared in phases one through three and uh, is, is pretty much 
part of that starter roster of the MCU. Yep. Um, as we officially know it. So, so yeah, like, shall we talk about Pep a bit? She first started as Stark's personal assistant. Yes. Then his unrequited love. Yes. Then business partner. Yes. Then CEO. Yes. Then eventually wife and partner. Exactly. So, heck yeah, girl. I mean, I'm glad she got, you know, uh, an arc, you know, mm-hmm. she's going from assistant, like yeah. you said, to 12% of the company mm-hmm. to, <laughs> to see <laughs> yeah. fully running. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and ultimately encompassing her, you know, with the, with the suit in Endgame. Yeah. That was a really, I was hyped when I saw that. I was like, whoa. Yeah, for sure. Let's go. Because also, you know, like, Knowing that version of the character and at least that era of the character, yeah. When Iron Man three dropped, maybe this was originally an, a, re- a reason why I didn't love Iron Man three because I was like, "Come on, man! You just gave her an arm thingy, and that's it." <laughs> Whereas I expected them to give her a suit, but of course, at the time, like the expectancy to that to see that, yeah. Like again, like we were saying at the top of the show, it's like it took me twenty years to get a yellow suited Wolverine. Like I never anticipated her to actually I mean, she put get on a suit. The suit. Yeah. Iron Man through right, three right, right. When, after the, the safety protocol in Malibu, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're like, everyone was probably, I think, I don't know if I remember being like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> but then. Yeah. And then, yeah, the, the whole fake death thing. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That, and you know what's funny is that a lot of, a lot of these notes that they hit in the storyline in the original Iron Man trilogy, they're all like subtle callbacks to things that do happen in the comics yeah, in a way. I would assume. But overall, Pepper is that character. She's the one cleaning up his messes. She's the one very elegantly speaking up for herself and also like kind of having a nervous breakdown yeah. in a funny way. Yeah. She's so she's so similar to the comic book version, at least, you know, canonically the one well not even that. Yeah. Like I guess back in the past and and also the modernization version, because of course they've changed her to be a little more like the Gwyneth Paltrow version right um but yeah like the 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 way that the character kind of has this almost perfect beginning and quote-unquote ending is I think something that's pretty rare in especially for like a very side character yeah yeah I agree so yeah it's really nice yeah 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 for sure um and so I, I moved aesthetic up. Uh, this is not unlike our Nick Fury episode where it's kind of important to actually talk about the visualization of the character. And so on our doc, Jeff, Jeff you can see I put, you know, this another marvelous uh, composition from Accurate MCU uh-huh. where you can see Gwyneth next to the, the comic book version. And yeah, it's it's pretty spot on, you know, for what it is because, you know, they went with a very natural look for the character in the yeah. MCU. She is technically like a strawberry blonde, you know. Tr- like, strawberry blonde. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a natural, you know, redhead, if you will. Um, and yeah, in the modernization of the character, she's very business suited. And then when it comes to rescue, um, we're going to talk a, a bit about rescue in just a second, but... Um, yeah, you know, the, the rescue armor was initially aesthetically similar to, to Iron Man. So we never see that, uh, even, I mean, maybe there's an Easter egg. I don't believe there is, but her suit used to be red and yellow in, in the comics, Mm. like, like this other picture over here. But, um, of course they, they modified it when Endgame came out and they made, and introduced this blue and silver, which I think is pretty solid. I like it. <laughs> I love well, the blue and silver. Well, just because obviously it's like in contrast to Tony. Yeah, exactly. Can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. And so, um, yeah. So from that, we'll just jump into powers and paraphernalia. So, so she has. She technically has no power. Um, she is once again one of these humanoid characters, um, as rare as that is in the Marvel universe. But you know, we've we've also encountered so many enhanced super beings. Um, Pep is, Pep is definitely one of the prominent characters that has no powers, but she does have the suit. So like, you know, we previously mentioned, she's got the help of the repulsor tech. So again, it's, it's kind of like an arc reactor. And then, uh, her suit is empowered with, um, with certain specifications that are not unlike Tony's, of course. Uh, it allows her to have, um, empower, she's empowered with energy emanation, 
electrical field detection, magnetic force fields, enhanced senses and strength, as well as regenerative durability and superhuman strength when she is rescue. Wow. And so in the MCU, of course, they, they changed that a tiny bit, especially again with Iron Man 3, which yeah. the more that we talk about Iron Man 3, I'm like... It is a catalyst for a lot of things that happen after that film. Yeah. And so, in particular, Pep was laced with the extremists. So, mm-hmm. 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 which I added an asterisk, real quick, spoiler alert <laughs> about <laughs> extremists. <laughs> if you have not seen Secret Invasion Episode 4, our girl Gaia. <laughs> 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 has been has has taken it been laced she, she, with she it. put herself to the trials yeah she put her she she has injected herself with extremists um you know what i will say though they yeah. kind of they kind of like what's that word that they kind of like ignored that pepper has the extremists yeah um thing inside of her she doesn't anymore she doesn't anymore no like tony i think if you rewatch it at the end of the film or near the end of the film, like Tony concocted whatever he had to do. Oh, did he? To, to Damn, take I it away. That, yeah, man. to take it out of, of Iron her. Iron Man 3? Yes. Yes. And so that's I how... I need to rewatch Iron Man 3. <laughs> yeah. And so, so Extremis itself, it's an enhanced nanotech-based genetic manipulation serum uh, in the MCU created by Maya Hansen and Dr. Aldrich Killian in Iron Man 3. And so, so yeah... Um, it enables uh, superhuman physical enhancements, healing, and regeneration from physical damages, deformities, and even psychological damages, as well as accelerated regrowth of severed limbs, which is like that oh whole gosh. thing. Yeah, like, you know, no. if you re- <laughs> again, if you rewatch Iron Man 3, um, you know, like the people that had been injected with it, they lose a limb. It just grows back. It's like lava stuff. So weird. Yeah. yeah it's it's very, it, again, it, like, and I think I said this in our roadie episode. It was like really the first time we saw anything that was remotely mutant like come into the MCU like that. Yeah. Um, because they were very much super beings that were not the usual kind of thing that we saw in Iron Man films, especially. Like it's always been technical, scientific forms like like you know people wearing suits like whiplash yes. for instance war machine and then in iron man 3 you introduced to these like people who could literally blow up <laughs> and did yeah it, it was it was something new for sure and so they had side effects of course that were referred to as exothermic side effects which are basically like they generate extreme heat and then um the yeah the host would explode we again saw kind of take on iron man the iron man mark was the first one in number two was it two when the malibu house goes kaput or is that three also i think that's it's, the it's, beginning it's of three. three it's three it's yeah. mid, mid three mid or f- no beginning because that's how he is launched outward right he's deployed out of the state oh my god i have to rewatch these <laughs> yeah. again <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's in the beginning because it's the entire like first act and quick, so quick side what happened yeah. what happened in iron man 2 iron man 2 is when whiplash was introduced whiplash. ivan yes yeah okay and then that's when we actually met don, don Cheadle for the first time okay so then it's iron man 3 i think the malibu house yeah. is for sure for yeah because sure, that's yes. like the entire yeah yeah which is alicia keys's house or her last house she she owned that house the more you know right <laughs> like, dang girl um so so anyway like yeah we've seen flickers of of pepper in an iron man suit but after tony um created the suit uh for pepper it empowered her with in the mcu at least super strength durability speed agility and reflexes as well as flight with a built-in unibeam among other features that came with the most iron man marks um of the time of its build so yeah like you know a lot of again a lot of the things that we have seen on screen with Tony, basically you just copy and paste it over to Pepper. She's probably a little lighter because it's a smaller suit. It has less functionality in some aspects and it's not like War Machine where he's got like a tank yeah. <laughs> on his back. <laughs> um, and so from what we know of Rescue, uh, it was built sometime after the blip and then featured on screen when Morgan Stark found the helmet, 
Which is interesting because, you know, I hadn't really thought about it too hard. And even Morgan Stark herself, I was like, oh, yeah. So she was pregnant in the beginning of Infinity War. Yes. When they're like jogging in the park and they have this exchange. Yes, probably. Right. And so she was pregnant then. Thankfully, didn't get snapped. Both Long, of them didn't, yeah. Yeah, thankfully. both of them, yeah. yeah. And then we're introduced to Rescue and Morgan at the same time, which is pretty nice. And so uh, <laughs> before we get into more about Morgan Stark, are you ready for your one and only pop quiz? <sighs> I suppose. <laughs> so while Tony has engineered over 60 suits in the comics... How many has Pepper had? Reminder in the, com- in the comics. Reminder in the MCU, she only had one. One. Yeah. I can tell you how much Iron Man had in MCU. And this is why. <laughs> this is why I'm infamously asking. Like, in contrast to your epic win in episode one, can you now? Can uh, you now? Can you now guess how many Pepper has had well, in the I mean, comics? If Tony had. So many. He has so many in the comics. Sure. Obviously. I don't even know exactly how many. I forget. Mm. We've talked about it's it. It's a though. lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's I like, think at one point when I was reading backwards, he had at least 1,400. Oh, damn. Okay. It's I was insane. thinking at yeah. least triple digits, but okay. Yeah. fourteen. I think I saw the number like four, 1,464 or so something. So how many has Pep had? How many has Pep had in the I comics? I feel like it's like significantly lower. Like it's even like... One percent of that. Okay. Which that would make it like a hundred some, right? A fourteen hundred. Oh God. But many, but just remember, rescue was introduced in two thousand nine. Two thousand ten. Would you say it's two thousand? Two thousand nine. So she was only introduced in two thousand nine. Okay. I'm going to go with the number. <laughs> I'm trying not to look you in the face. Because <laughs> I'm going to give it away. <laughs> 2010. God. Mm-hmm. I mean, is she as reckless as Tony is with the suit? <laughs> I mean, that's it's Pepper Potts. That's what I'm saying. It's Pepper Potts, buddy. My gut? My gut. Never mind. I don't know any. <laughs> no, come on. I think my gut is literally saying less than 10. Okay. And if not, I'm pushing that to twelve. But I don't think it's I don't think it's there. I hate you. Why'd you react like that? Because <laughs> you like you're you're doing great, and then you like doubt yourself, and it's like, <laughs> like my gut says less gut. than ten. Okay, that's so great. I'm gonna go with my favorite number. One of my favorite numbers, eight. Is that your final answer? Yeah, I'm gonna say it. <sighs> so close. You're so close. It's five. Oh. <laughs> But you're right there. You're uh, right. You're right in that it was less than ten. So, so not to bring in the rule of five in general in the in the Marvel comics, but like you know, it's said that the equivalent of five years is the equivalent of one year in the comic book life. So, oh if she's been around for fourteen 40, years, uh, 14. let's say it's three years in her lifetime as rescue, uh. and so. Okay, how many upgrades has she had? Not to say that that's factual in this case. Gotcha. But that's kind of what gives you the semblance of, ah, okay, let me get an idea. And yeah, she's not Tony Stark, and she is getting it from Tony. And, you know, Tony is number one in Tony's book, especially when it comes to the comics. So she's had five in the comics. Wow. Yeah. That is and, not a lot. Yeah. And so in homage, this, one's, this part's going to blow your mind a little, and we're not going to talk about it more until later on. But in homage... To her dearly departed divorcee, Pepper's latest suit even featured its own AI named acronym H-A-P-P-Y. Ha! <laughs> Hosted analog program pre-Y2K. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so, they really filled it up there. Yeah, right? So we'll talk about that Uh a bit later down the line. And so for now, we're going to dive into family, friends, and affiliations. Um, so Morgan Stark, you know, this is this is an interesting one because, you know, the MCU as a whole is filled with insane Easter eggs of all kinds. Yes. Like if it's if it's 
a play back to an actual event, if it's just the title, if it's a character name, if it's a, you know, a gender swap, like all these things are, are part of this grander story. But, um, you know, when it comes to, to Morgan Stark, it's, it's actually quite surprising because the character does exist. It is not at all the same character. And so in the comic books, funny enough, Morgan Stark um, is actually (laughs) the son of Tony's uncle Edward, a.k.a. Howard Stark's brother. So Howard Stark and Tony Stark are the same as Edward Stark and Morgan Stark. Oh, my God. So they're cousins. Um, Okay. Yeah. And so... um, in, in a nutshell, as a means of escaping the stress of the family business that is Stark Industries, Edward gave his shares to Howard, yes. who then gave them to Tony. And so as a result, Morgan was like, man, I got gypped. How come I didn't, <laughs> I didn't get a chance? And so that basically cements his role as an adversary of Tony's. And so, <laughs> yeah, there's some family, bad family blood going that. on. Yeah, and so... It is a distant departure from the Mar- Morgan Stark we're introduced to in the Avengers games, of course, portrayed as a child by Lexi Rabe and then uh, as an adult in a deleted scene by Catherine Langford, who I love. And so I'm kind of like, oh, man, because <laughs> I doubt she'll come back for anything. Like yeah. That was it, um, at least for her, uh, as, for Catherine. But but yeah, you know, it's. I am curious why they decided to take that name on. Maybe they just wanted to make it a better thing or like Morgan being sort of like a gender fluid name too. Yeah. It's very, very modern. So I maybe, don't, yeah, maybe it's as simple as that. But of course, you know, the character was first last and seen in 28. 28- <laughs> and see, I wrote 2018 in this one. So is it 2018 or 2019 that Endgame came out? Either way, it's a long time 2019 already. For yeah, sure. uh, directed by the Russo brothers. Yeah, and so, we're, do you think we'll ever see Morgan Stark again? You, like, no, right? That's why we have Ironheart because we got Ironheart now. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta let things go. <laughs> gotta let it go. And so, uh, <laughs> someone we've discussed very recently, uh, James Rhodey Rhodes. And so, surprisingly enough, uh, I would say comparatively, there's not much of a difference between the comic book and the MCU dynamic. Yeah, they have these occasional run-ins. They have joint missions, but nothing super outstanding. They, you know, they don't severely impact one each other, one each other's like stories. Yeah, at all in the comics. Um, of course, Rhodey <laughs> portrayed by Don Cheadle, uh, and most recently seen in Secret Wars. <laughs> A secret invasion, sorry. And uh <laughs> and uh like I said Woo! Spoiler Woo! alert <laughs> I should have bought a lot of ticket because he's a scroll <laughs> like I said I swear to god I've been saying this for years. For years But I don't even know why, you know what I mean? Like I don't know why. I just got the vibe that like he's not like wouldn't that be messed up if they're like, Oh yeah, you know, like after Iron Man two, you just yeah. Trust your gut. Right. I think my 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 thing is I think he be, he's a scroll. It's it's um, it's after Endgame. Yeah. So maybe this after the, the Iron Man, the, Iron the, War the, Machine. Yeah, the roads yeah. we saw in Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah. Might be a scroll. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's um, the general I that, consensus. I know, I know that. Ro- what, say that again. That's the general consensus. Is that it's yeah. around that timeline? I think that rubs people the wrong way. Just because they, because they, because of that conversation that he has with 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 Sam, uh, with Sam, mm. so people are like, like, oh, so it's all just, and it's like, it's not that it's fake; it's just that it was probably a genuine conversation, mm. but it was just like, and it could also be after that moment, like it that doesn't too. have to be very like yeah. exactly when F- Falcon Witcher Soldier started. It could be somewhere down that line, yeah. As that's all going down with with you know the the rebels and yes. you know um, Walker. Somewhere in that mess could have been the exchange or the swap out, you know? I mean, we're going to find out sooner or later we how are. that came to be. I know. And, you know, of course, like, not to veer off into Secret Invasion Land, but I think that's why they do take the beats of conversation that they do in this series already, right? Like, you're introduced to, like, at the beginning of this episode, for instance, a poem that is later recited again. And yeah. so... I like that. I know. I loved it. It made me cry. Um, and they they have now introduced this 
who were you? Why did you choose this face? So we'll I think, find out sooner or later. Yeah, we will I, talk about it in our mini yeah, Marvel it's when coming the dope. series is done. I can't wait. For the yeah, 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 yeah. So I can't wait. So so yeah, we recently discussed Rhodey. Um of course this was pre pre secret invasion, but we did a, a character study in episode fifty three. Um yeah, they had, they didn't have too much on screen time together, right? Not screen too time? much. Yeah. Pep no, and not Pep and much. Rhodey. Hmm. No, actually, no. Yeah, no, I don't think that much. Maybe the most was probably maybe in Iron Man too. Yeah, I would say so too because I don't even remember Terrence Howard really being in the same room as her. No, because he wasn't on it wasn't screen really that much. Like a yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. So super, super interesting. Um, and of course, uh, you know, when it comes to both the comics and the films, uh, honorable mentions to Riri Williams in the comics who uh, Pepper worked with when Tony wasn't around in you know one of the many times that he was either dead or missing. <laughs> and then of course Phil Coulson uh, in the MCU side, as you mentioned, Jeff. Phil. Phil. No, his first name Miss is Agent. Agent. Mr. Stark. Phil, come in. Phil. I can't stay. Uh, his first name is Agent. Um... And so one of one of the most interesting bits of any character, really, uh, the love interest, when it comes to Pep, she's got a few people uh, worth talking about, three in particular. Um, the first one is Marcus Mark Kumar. And so I didn't write too much about this guy. Long story short, they met during an event in Vegas. They dated for months. They got engaged. And then he became an ally of the Mandarin. And took on the name The Liar. And so, <laughs> gosh, what was it again? So so we talked about the Ten Rings a bit in our Shang-Chi episode, yes. right? Really way back. And so each of the rings has a purpose and a different power, right? And so the uh, Marcus took on one of the rings and yeah. it turned him into The Liar. And so he could, like, he just, like, turned into, like, flames or something. He His entire body just changed. And so... I put on my bullet point end result they broke up um, <laughs> because you know he tried to kill Iron Man and you know how that goes yeah that's fair yeah and there's no MCU counterpart when it comes to that but that's more or less the outlier when it comes to someone serious in Pepper's life that wasn't one of the two men we're about to talk about so yeah. that leads us to speaking of H A P P Y wow Harold Joseph Happy Hogan Just kept it in the triangle that's yeah crazy. they really did so going back to the old days. Um, Pepper and Tony had a flirtatious dynamic from the get-go. Happy, however, didn't have the same luck. And so, again, despite his romantic pursuit of Pepper, she constantly rejected the homie. She was like, no. Just like Aunt Not May. into you. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. It's kind of like Aunt May in a, in a weird... Yeah, oh my God. I just think of Jon Favreau in, my, Sp- in Spider-Man. My like, mind just blew up. Yeah, yeah. it's absolutely <laughs> like, like that. Were you crying? Yeah, we, 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 your, yeah. Aunt, your Aunt May and I broke up. <laughs> yes. Like, that was a break. I mean, it was kind of just. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, it's exactly, it's it's quite similar to that. Just imagine it being Pepper instead. And so that was the comic book version. And so um, it's, it's just off and on for a very long time. Uh, and in the end, you know, all it took was just, you know, a life-threatening situation to bring them together. So it it was so impactful that, it made Pepper realize that after all this time, she actually did love Happy in a mm. romantic sense. And so it their relationship finally materializes and then they leave Stark Industries together. So he loses his chauffeur wow. <laughs> and he loses his, I think at the time, she, she was probably more than his personal assistant, but maybe more of the secretary business partner sense. They both leave Stark Industries and then they go elope. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's it's like for real. Like this is her her ride or die in the comic. And so despite the efforts, the two couldn't keep it together. And they cuz they couldn't they couldn't conceive. Yeah. They wanted children, they couldn't it wouldn't happen. And so they decided, "Hey, how about this? Let's adopt a girl and a boy." Mm-hmm. They adopt children. They have children together. And so um <laughs> Sadly, there's this big, big moment in the comics where, you know, of course, Happy is another character we can talk about on his own, but he has a very bad spell where he, he kind of turns into an alcoholic of sorts, loses his job. He can't hold anything together. Pep is the one being the breadwinner and keeping the family together. And so they then lose custody of the children. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so 
all that said, they eventually divorce. Even before that, like Pepper cheated on him, by the way. Oh my god! So she thought it's it's such it's so dramatic. It she thought dramatic. that yeah, right. She thought he was cheating on her, so she went and cheated on him. But he didn't do any of that, and then he found out, and they were like, okay, this isn't working anymore. And so, unfortunately, even though they parted ways in two thousand six, Happy then dies. <laughs> Jeff is like his face jarred. Very dramatic. Yeah, it's super dramatic. He dies after an encounter with a villain called the Spy Master, who we've talked about very, very yeah, briefly. Yeah, yeah, very briefly. It's just a weird Iron Man like sub character, and he comes in and out of different heroes' lives. But, but yeah, he's injured like many of these characters are in battle. You know, he's on the sidelines, and then he he gets he goes into a coma, I believe, and he's in a vegetative state. Oh my god! And there's this entire, um, you know, part of an issue where Tony is is kind of like, you know, trying to. He's like, this is his best friend. He wants to keep him alive. And then Pepper recalls a moment where where Happy was like, you know what? If that ever happened to me, I would just want to go. Damn. So she tells Tony, and then you know she leaves, and then somewhere down the line, he's removed from life support and he dies he's never come back in the comics he's dead in the comic books wow yeah so he's a big part of the comic book version's life whereas in the mcu (laughs) harold joseph happy hogan is portrayed by our beloved john favreau first seen in 2008's iron man directed by himself and shane black and last seen in two years ago Two years ago in Spider-Man No Way Home, oh directed by John Watts. Yeah. Time. And so, yeah, I feel like the roots of their dynamic are very, very, like, platonic, very caring about one another. And clearly, he's he plays a huge part because he's basically Morgan's, like, godfather. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's nothing like, <laughs> nothing at all like the comic book. Um, I hope to God we never see that. <laughs> that's it's so bizarre. That it's, is. it's it's interesting. It's it's kind of like I feel like they they kind of adopted that trope in many of the classic books where yeah. it's like the innocent secretarial type of female figure is loved and adored by the big brute who is rough around the edges. Yeah. And then there's the handsome superhero at the forefront and it's a love triangle, you know, because this is the same yeah. that could be said between Peter Parker, Gwen Stacy and Harry Osborn. That is very true. Right. Cyclops, Gene and Wolverine. Another one. Very <laughs> yeah, true. So that it's kind of it's kind of replicated over time. But yeah, they did not carry that over into uh, the MCU world. But but yeah, they had some really funny uh scenes as well i think iron man 2 they have quite a few especially like like right from the get-go on the racetrack yes that's one of my favorites <laughs> yeah. too. I, I don't know like there are parts that just stand don't out be the me. case yeah don't be the case and then pepper's just like ah! <laughs> when gwyneth paltrow like loses her her it's mind so funny. it's so funny like it's so like she's it's so great. composed right? yeah and then, you know, like, I don't know if you knew this, but like back in the day, Emma and I, you know, Emma, Jared's, Jared's Emma, like we would compare, we would call her, she was Pepper Potts mm. and I always called her Pepper Potts and she'd be like, it's me. And so like, it makes it a little more funnier for me because I imagine Emma like freaking out, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, which the, she never did. She's yeah. very much like Pepper, always. very composed and, and very, very, you know, like in control in a very cool manner. And so to see Pep flipping out the way she does in Iron Man 2 and what other... Oh, and like in Iron Man 1, for instance, when she's pulling the thing, the wire from his chest in that incredible... like yeah. I just heard that, my favorite line from that. He's like, all right, so you're going to be, you're going to see a silver wire. Whatever you do, don't pull the wire. Yeah. Like, oh, what's happening now? What's happening now? Oh, no, I'm just going to go into cardiac arrest. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that scene is like marvelous. Like, yeah. Sh- truly like top really 10 line. MCU yeah. moments because even the way that they shot and filmed it is incredible because me too. Like when I was watching it, I was like, how did they do that? Is it CGI? And then no, it's like, no, it's a practical practical stunt where it's a fake body but it's rdj's like head yeah clavicle upward yeah genius absolutely genius and so i love moments like that with her 
And that's kind of why I love the dynamic she does end up having with Happy because it brings them kind of back to this 1963 tone of yeah. like, again, slapstick sort of ridiculousness. But um, yeah, <laughs> last but not least, when it comes to the love interests, however, is Mr. Anthony Edward Tony Stark. Who? Never Tony heard Stark. of this man. <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Iron Man. Um, so throwback to Hawkeye, uh, back in episode 15, where we discussed one of the many dates where Tony's, uh, allegiance to his secret identity lost him chances with Pepper. So rewind real quick, all the way back to, to that episode, we talked about how Hawkeye's like origin story of sorts, right? Yeah. It, it manifested while he was in, in a carnival. Yes. And so Tony, and this is when they were really starting to pull together what, semblance of would be the avengers one day and so tony brought pepper on a date very reluctantly to that mm-hmm. same carnival that hawkeye was at and so it's one of those those things where like happy couldn't be with her so he was like tony tony you take her out you take her out on a date go take her out on a date and so he would just take her places <laughs> and then he was like oh no there's a catastrophe i gotta go and then here comes iron man and then he's like oh i'm so sorry pepper like you know and he would just ditch he would ghost on her all the time i and mean so, to save the world to save the world and so while they had good chemistry in in the beginning especially in the comics tony just wanted to help happy bag her more than he wanted to so it then turned into him you know persuading happy you know like maybe you should just you know i I got some other stuff to do like there's a there's a panel a couple panels uh where in fact like tony walks in and he's like hey pep what do you think about blah blah like this fancy restaurant and she's like oh yeah i'd love to go that'd be awesome i'll make a reser- oh yeah i'd love to go and then he goes great i'll make a reservation for two i'm gonna take that blonde from accounting and she's like what the <laughs> and so that happens a lot in the comics and so you know it just never takes off it never really takes off there yeah. are points in the modern comics of course where they're trying to replicate the mcu version they do have moments pepperoni is a thing you've heard this right pepperoni 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 with a y i mentioned it <laughs> yeah, i think you have it's their ship named jeff Pepper- pepperoni, pepperoni. <laughs> with a y so it Gosh. does happen it happens at points but it just never goes beyond that it never goes beyond something like they've just been with each other for so long yeah. that they understand each other but there's nothing it's not nearly as impactful on her as happy as so so uh yeah it just doesn't it doesn't it's it stays there it doesn't go any further and uh like many of his closest confidants stark named one of his ai programs after pep the p-e-p-p-e-r which stands for <laughs> uh there's actually no reveal of that what it means <laughs> i was gonna say i i scoured what are we I doing scoured here? like what does p e p p e r too yeah. many p's i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i know that's right like practical engineering psychology and for no forensics is an f <laughs> <laughs> they're just um, like oh we gotta give we gotta yeah, use her as an acronym but we don't know what it means party enhancement replicatory rescue or something Jeez. i'm sure rescue is the r but i don't there's nothing but it was probably because they couldn't make an acronym that made sense they then later named it helen h-e-l-e-n after the helen of troy mm. i don't remember what that acronym there's gotta is. be somebody <laughs> that works at comics and stuff that whose job specifically is to come up with acronyms i want that job <laughs> i would be baller at that job <laughs> hire me for that job yeah i don't know well actually i just said forensics with a p so maybe <laughs> not <laughs> so um of course anthony edward tony stark portrayed by robert downey jr the goat um Woo. who yeah rip we've not seen since 2019 and we probably i hope will we never don't s- never keep see him his again. ass dead <laughs> i'm gonna say it hot take all this multiverse stuff no yeah no he's one they can't I like, don't even want to see him there. Like the idea that Tom Cruise would have shown up in in No Way Home was yeah. like fun for a minute, yeah. but I was like, nah, don't. If do I that. ever see Robert Downey Jr. in person, I'll be like, don't come back. <laughs> 
I will pay you tonight. You don't it. owe us anything. No, they don't. He doesn't. He definitely doesn't. <laughs> and this is coming from the biggest Iron Man <laughs> like fan. Fanatic, yeah. <laughs> True that. So yeah, we haven't really discussed Tony since our very, very first episode. So let's sit with Iron Man a bit. Let's do this. Let's talk about it. But then you want to watch Iron Man 3 again. So there's also that. I do. Yeah. Do you have I've a favorite? I've seen it multiple times, but I want to... Because I want to... Because I know people like... it has It's... People like did not like it, obviously. Three? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're like, what what is go it I was think it was it was the whole Mandarin thing. Like that was like it was. A, a main reason. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, now we're going to this uh like extremist thing going mm-hmm. on. Like, oh Pep dies, but not really. <laughs> See, <laughs> and that's the thing. And uh, again, that's probably part of my reason why I didn't like it so much at first is that it you even forget that that's the same movie. Because it's so a lot of different. Yeah, yeah, there's so, so many layers to it. Because, like, if you do look back on Iron Man 1, it was very Obadiah Stane. And it was just about the Iron Man mark. It was an origin story. Yeah. But they really stayed in that lane of, it's about this suit. It's about the suit that comes from that and all the trial and error. And then, you know, of, of course, Tony Stark, the industrialist, right? Yeah. And then in Iron Man 2... Even though it takes place, you know, like with these characters that are far away from the usual scope, they're still staying in that lane of, okay, it's about the tech, it's being stolen, it's being created for Hammer. They're doing this stuff with yeah. with Whiplash and it's the suit. It's just Hammer and Whiplash. Yeah. yeah. And so, and then here comes three, <laughs> like the black sheep of the trio being like, all right, well, here's a serum that makes super soldiers that explode. And also... Here's a Mandarin, but he's not the Mandarin you think he is. He's an but actor. He's, he's an actor. Yeah. 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 And then um, and then the Pepper stuff on top of that. And all, I mean, it's, 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 a it's a lot. And Iron Patriot. And yes. Iron Patriot. There's a lot. And, and it's hot little second of yeah. cameo. But, uh, but how's, how's Party <laughs> Protocol is, was definitely one of my favorite yeah, scenes. Yeah. 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 Um, I love that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is, uh, it is a lot. It's a lot. But... If you re- if you rewatch these movies like ne- like years later, you're yeah. kind of like, oh well, it wasn't horrible. No, that's what I said about for sure. That's, that's what I said about um, Thor: Dark World. Yeah, and Ultron. Funny side story: I went to my friend Nick's house. Yeah. <laughs> like last week, uh-huh. and we we're just like, uh, like what movie should we watch? Da, 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 da. And I don't, I don't know what what like led up to this conversation, but like we're talking about like I don't know like bad either like bad movies or like movies you can't really sit through. Mm-hmm. And he was like. And he just, he was talking like smack to me. He was like, he was like, shut up or I'm going to make you watch Thor Dark World. And I was like, you mother. <laughs> I was like, you know. I was like, it's look, not it's not that bad that anymore. That okay? bad. <laughs> yeah. In hindsight. But he listens. Like, yeah. Thanks yeah. for listening, Nick. Shout out. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's yeah. really funny. Yeah. Like it, it's kind of what it, it's like the, 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 the fruit of the tree that fell off and yeah, kind of yeah, got yeah. bruised. And it's not so great, but it's not so bad. Yeah. Um, and sadly, I think that Quantumania made that list too, right? It's kind of... Mm. Unfortunately. <laughs> I don't think it's like horrible. I still don't think it's that bad. I, I just don't, don't like all the CGI. It's like, just... It's a lot. I, it's, it's just a lot. Yeah. It's going into a place that doesn't exist. Yeah. So... Yeah. It's like... I mm. mean... Yeah. Eh. I still think it was fun. Yeah. I mean, what else is there to say? I mean, it's... It's... The character himself... Tony Stark, and I think we've mentioned this previously, is that that version of Tony Stark that they, cr- that they created for MCU yeah. was was truly so sensational and so likable despite his shortcomings. Yeah. Whereas in the comics, he does have not so great moments <laughs> very often. And he overall is kind of a douche. He's kind of. I mean, yeah, not that, great. First, that first Iron Man movie. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're kind of like, oh my god, like how am I supposed to like this guy? Yeah. And then you end up doing because that's yeah. what happens over like you know yeah. the story arc of yeah. the movie, the m- multiple movies he was in. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but yeah. the goat, the goat. Yeah. Um, just just leave it, just leave it how it is, man. Yeah. Like I don't want to. So, I think if if that ever were to happen, yeah. If, if whatever if iron man were to show up mm-hmm. in whatever as a cameo or whatever mm-hmm. i think i would legitimately just l- let out a big oh god yeah. like why yeah why <laughs> people are gonna be clapping right sure be like, oh my god yeah i'll be like no <laughs> you should have stayed dead yeah 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 i mean so here's a question for you 
Do you think we'll ever see a reboot? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, the day that happens, I leave this earth. <laughs> I leave. The day, the day that happens, I will have left this earth. Like, I'm like, hoping. If like, that I happens, the, we the never... podcast ends. <laughs> it will, it will spontaneously human combust. Yeah. Podcast I combust. I yeah. Know. I mean, I know. I, I mean, I, I, that's so easy for me to say because we've had so many reboots. So, sure. So many like things, but mm-hmm. it's like. I don't think they'll ever do that. No. Not for, I we mean, can't. it's already so far like it's it's gone like so many lifetimes yeah in the phases that they've done and iron man was so you know he's such an integral part of that yeah to then be like in 20 years to reboot it seems the it's like the audacity yeah if i'm if (laughs) if i'm 40 and there is like a new iron man coming out yeah and it's literally the same thing but just a different oh i'll be like yeah why Dude, that's how I feel as a Spider-Man fan. That's what I, I that's why I said earlier. Yeah. Where I was just like I was like I know it's easy to say, but they've rebooted Spider-Man so many freaking Spider-Man times. Spider-Man and Batman have really paid the toll. But there's only one person's <laughs> fault in that and it's Sony. Sony does not know <laughs> how to freaking handle their titular superhero. So you're telling me you don't want to cover Craven? I mean, sure. <laughs> if, I, if I turn into a hunter by lion's blood, let's freaking do it. <laughs> oh they don't know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But who am I to tell? Like it's I said, really unfortunate. Everyone sees their own, but it's just like... Sure. But I think that's also a, you know, not to pun it, but it's a stark contrast, right? Like, there's that studio that's kind of intermingled with the home front, right? Yeah. They've really messed it up. Yeah. And they had to do when, it. When Spidey joined MCU. Exactly. <laughs> play nice, y'all. Just play nice. And now you have nowhere... Now, now right. you, there's no talks of... Oh, who's gonna replace Spider Man? Oh yeah, uh, never. You know, no, they're like, well, so like is, oh no, it's Tom. Yeah, they're like, it's when, Tom. when is it coming out? Yeah, they're like, when is it? When is it happening? Like it's Tom. When's Tom. the next movie? Yeah, <laughs> it's very like, true. You're not thinking. Yeah. I'm like, oh, who could be the next one? Like, no, no, yeah. And I think that's also why that that's the, the beauty of it working in in Tony's favor and his periphery of characters is because it's so well done from the get. They don't need to rewind. Yeah. So. We won. Here's a super side <laughs> tangent question. Yes. When do you think Spider Man is done in movies? Bruh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that's, that's a good question because it's like he's he's so you always feel like he can never just go away. No, I don't. Not think like he will. like Iron Man. Like Iron Man is okay. Like mm-hmm. RDJ did his run. Sure. He, no one could ever touch like yeah. Iron Man and Tony Stark. Yeah. But now you're like. Can Peter Parker Spider Man ever be just like God man done off screen? I don't think so. I mean, he's died in one movie. Yeah, I don't think so. Into the Spider-Verse. Like, that was, okay, cool. Like, it's like, when you move on from a different version of that character, yeah. like, from Steve to Sam, like, cool, mm-hmm. like, you know, but to, like, have another version of that character, I yeah, don't... Yeah, I don't know, man. Especially because of movies like Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse, right? They, and, and the multiverse, for that matter, they've really introduced the idea and concept of it. They're normalizing that concept an idea yeah and so now whereas before they used to have make have to make excuses like oh toby mcguire isn't coming back because blah 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 yeah. then they had to make an excuse oh well andrew garfield's not coming back because oh in the second movie to do so great blah 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 and then it turned into now it's tom holland and he's done three movies plus the two that aren't his or three whatever it is yeah He's already at his cap, so to speak, right? He's already met the maximum he is required to do. Here on out, it's either they just renew his contract, he signs a baller contract where he makes even more money than he can deal deal with. But where does he go from there? And so they could just, he's, you know, he's teased it. Like, who's he going to pass the torch to? And yes, now it can be a Miles Morales. It can be a Miguel O'Hara. It can be a Penny Parker. And people are going to be like, dope, but they are going to be like, where's Peter Parker? They're always going to look for Peter Parker. Kill him. (laughs) Kill him. And then they'll be like, well, where's the other one? Kill him. We'll get another one. Kill him. (laughs) Wilson (laughs) Fisk kills (laughs) Spider-Man. Well, they did in Gwen's verse. So, I mean, he dies in many universes. He dies in many of them. (laughs) Make it make it happen in MCU where he so, dies by Wilson Fisk. They just have to bring a Spider Sona up to that level 
Look, Jamie that Foxx Electro want this, thought he, he, he'd be black. <laughs> There's a black Spider-Man <laughs> roaming around. God, that line is so good too. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, I think that's all that they have to do. Or, but you know how people are; they're gonna immediately be like, "Okay, so does that mean Toby can come back?" No. Does that mean like, pass the torch? Don't reboot the same person. Toby is nearly fifty years old. He yeah, doesn't want to do that again. <laughs> Maybe a cameo again, but he doesn't want to do a full his movie. Back hurts. Okay. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> leave him alone. He hurt his back riding Sea Biscuit. Come on. <laughs> and then Andrew, of course, like I would love to see Andrew again because he's amazing. He's moved on. No, no pun intended. But but he's moved. Tom, like let on. them let them live tom doesn't even want to act he's, he took i know a break. poor tom oh <laughs> um but yeah yeah i don't know i just yeah unfortunately he's like the most recognizable character of all time right like I he agree. beat the mouse I, the mouse used to be number one now it's peter parker slash spider-man i agree so to answer your question no he's never gonna he's gonna come back in one way or another whether that's because of sony or if one day knock on wood he actually go, goes back to marvel full force that's all the more reason for them to to do something yeah with the character yeah on home turf you know yeah. what i mean so he's kevin, unending kevin just kill <laughs> just, just kill uh Fuggy. just kill uh, peter parker Fuggy. it's fine Fuggy. it's fine i know amy pascal would never allow that well, yeah no no not 100 <laughs> so, i mean i say what i'm saying but amy's <laughs> never gonna let that happen no, no. ever never in a billion years <laughs> like, what do you mean i can't make another peter parker story <laughs> yeah, exactly. i don't know how to run this studio <laughs> sorry that's very i was very spiteful <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, he's never gonna. He's he's definitely never gonna go away. And I I think the same could be said for Batman. And then if they finally get it right, Superman, it's gonna be the same story. I mean, not literally, but maybe literally, maybe literally and I mean, we'll figuratively. See Superman legacy in a mm-hmm. couple of years. So yeah. So so yeah. We'll we'll see what happens. But uh, <laughs> no, I'm sure we'll see. I'm sure that was a very long side tangent. We though. may see. I know we just love us some Spider Man though. But yeah, I. Long story short, we may see another Peter Parker in our lifetime, but we'll. I. I don't think we'll see another Tony Stark. No, no. not not in that same I don't breath. Want to. Yeah, and so that brings us to notable adversaries, and so um, easily said. Uh, Pep's enemies tend to, to skew very Iron Man heavy and uh, even sometimes unexpected with the likes of Green Goblin. Mm. God, I swear that dude is everywhere in the comics. He is everywhere. Every single freaking superhero you can imagine, Green Goblin has come up through the ashes and tried to ruin their lives for some reason. And so he has done that with Pep. Uh, the Mandarin has come up the actual mandarin has come up a couple of times um but one of her biggest adversaries was actually iron man himself and so not my favorite like superior spider-man but there was indeed the superior iron man oh i remember this yeah we've talked about this a couple of times (laughs) um speaking of you know just jumping off the 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 tangent of would we ever see another tony stark i mean this is the one and only exception but even then i don't think i would like to see it yeah so during an avengers x-men storyline often referred to as axis um earth's mightiest heroes and villains had their morality reversed by magic so (laughs) this is where the whole hydra cap thing also kind of came to play right like it's sort of that mentality like that was a different scenario but like take the purest superhero like steve rogers and then twist the morality yeah so that they were just like you know what i don't want to save those people i'm just gonna save me it was kind of that kind of scenario so so this whole thing not that tony was a stand-up guy to begin with but with this reverse um it created this version of Tony's persona that then took on, I believe it was a, a not AI, but a synthetic version of his body because he had died. This is one of those moments where Tony Stark had died in the comics. And so he came back as this superior Iron Man. And so he walked the earth like making decisions as tony stark would but for his own benefit and so much that he was like creating his own god i don't even know what to call it not religion but like he was he was he was bringing up his own group of of almost bad guys 
my gosh. <laughs> it's like everything. <laughs> I've written it down here. <laughs> and so, um, this, you know, even though the, the spell was eventually undone, Tony Stark, this Tony Stark managed to retain his corrupt state. He built an evil empire, including <laughs> an app based virus guised as extremist 3.0 and so it made people addicted to the app so oh my gosh. speaking of waking up and just going on a nap wow. so so this is going to sound really familiar by the way um he <laughs> it it began to to curate this this uh addiction in people so so much so that he would then deprive them, right? It's almost like it's almost like a gateway drug. Yeah. So if you didn't pay for upgrades in this app, you would be denied enhancements. Oh my gosh. And the pay was a hundred dollars a day. <laughs> so imagine if you will. A day? <clears throat> I just caught that. I was like, oh, like a, a month. I was like, day. a day. So imagine a a a very scientific, brilliant-minded man. Wow! Who makes technology on the oh side? Oh my God! That doesn't sound familiar. Not at all. At all. Tweep tweep. <laughs> yeah, it's basically him. <laughs> Superior Iron Man is basically. Well, we know what comic book he reads. <laughs> that's what I said. I was like, Oh my God! It's <laughs> he Elon probably Musk. read that and was like, Oh my gosh! Yeah, genius! What a great <laughs> idea! <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh my lordy. Yeah, so he's basically taken the route that Elon Musk took. Or vice versa. Elon Musk took the route that Superior Iron Man did. Chris. Mm-hmm. Chris. And so anyway, thankfully, when the occur- incursion happened, and so the incursion we've mentioned in a few episodes by now, but that's basically when Earth 1610 and 616 collided and then blah, 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 blah. Those people ceased to exist. Yeah. He met his fate during that entire thing mm. so he is no longer thank god <laughs> but he was a gigantic adversary of peppers during that entire time so so i mean i don't even know that she has like a true like you know green goblin superman dynamic with yeah. anyone but superior iron man is a is a front runner bec- for many reasons because of the tony stark relationship and all that stuff but but yeah thankfully there's no mcu counterpart <laughs> of that of that Iron Man or adversary, um, I don't think we'll ever see him. And so, not to not to rehash what we've already kind of discussed, but uh, we're just going to kind of quickly go through these other ones that we do see in the films, mm-hmm. uh, starting with Obadiah Stane. Um, they, they, I don't have any recollection that they they bump heads uh, too often, if at all, in the comics. Um, he did, however, make his first appearance nearly 15 years after Pepper. So he didn't come about until like 1985-ish, mm, 1990. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're, of course, portrayed by Jeff Bridges in the MCU, first seen in Iron Man. Uh, and then uh, we last saw the character, at least, in 2021's What If, where he was voiced by Kiff van der Heuvel. Um, I Yeah, he, he got punched by Happy. <laughs> That's the one thing I really do remember. It was the... I think it was the what if Killmonger saved Tony Stark. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He was, he, that was the last time we saw that character. Um, then uh, on the comic side, Anton Igorovich Vanko, Whiplash. Uh, again, we just talked about him, briefly talked about him in our roadie episode as well. But again, there's no real like really? dynamic against them, yeah, with them in, in the comics so much. Uh, whereas in the MCU version, his name changed to Ivan Ivanko, uh, portrayed by Mickey Rourke, first and last seen in Iron Man 2. And I think he had a small cameo in What If as well. Uh, but yeah, it, as far as the MCU goes, you know, while both Whiplash and the Mandarin were both mixed up in in like that whole scenario, like Pepper got mixed up in that game. Yeah. She still had more beef with with Aldrich Killian <laughs> more than anybody <laughs> because like she had like you know like what was it didn't he try to renounce her a little bit he did yeah yeah he did. <laughs> and so speaking of him he uh as as if you can believe it he had such a big part in Iron Man 3 right was it three three, three. yes he had such a big part in that film 
But if you can believe it, he only had apparently had one appearance in the comics. Oh my gosh. One. Wow. Yeah. And so similar to the film, Aldrich developed extremists with Maya. So that is consistent between the comics and the film. Mm-hmm. Um, theirs was more of a super soldier formula. Mm. Whereas I think in the, f- I think they kind of skirted around it in Iron Man 3. Yeah. 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 But not a hundred percent the same. Um, and so, yeah, he, he didn't play a huge part in the comics aside doing that. Um, nor was he even associated with Stark the way that it played out in the films. But Maya, uh, what was her name? Maya Hansen, she actually did play quite a role in the comics. We're not going to talk about her because she and Pepper didn't really have that much to do. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting how that played out. So, of course, Aldrich Killian, uh, portrayed by Guy Pierce. First and last seen in 2013's Iron Man 3. 2013. It's been 10 years. Oh my gosh. Directed by Shane Black. And so, yeah, a blast from the past who uh, took extremists to new heights with his foundation, AIM, another favorite acronym, hmm. Advanced Idea Mechanics. That's another name we've heard bounced around. Just just dropped in there. Nothing yeah, crazy. Yeah, Loki, WandaVision. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so, uh, yeah, it was interesting. So he was that nerd that wanted to tell Stark his ideas yeah, yeah, and, and blew then him off. blew, he yeah. got blown off. Then he comes back. Typical. And typical. Typical, <laughs> t- typical arc, villain yeah. arc. Well, it's very similar to also, uh, speaking of, of Jamie Foxx, it's, it's a lot like Electro too. He's kind of that yeah. nerdy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, unbearable scientific type. Um, and so, yeah, he, in the film, he worked with Tony's ex Maya Hansen. And so in the comics, uh, they're just, I don't know if they actually had a romantic relationship, but they were college friends, Tony and Maya. Whereas in the film, they were kind of like a one-nighter at New Year's Eve yes. or whatever it was. And so she's portrayed by Rebecca Hall. Um, yeah, and then he killed, they, they all just killed her cold. Just shot her, from what I remember. Jeez. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I think he and Pepper had, had more... Of the three villains, as far as Iron Man is concerned, I feel like they had the most intermingling, but still, she still hasn't had one direct villain, right? Mm, yeah. Aside, of course, Thanos, who gets an sure. honorable mention for all the right reasons. Oh, yeah. He's um, a villain to everybody. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and of course, the emergence and homage to A-Force uh, by proxy, which is never anything shy of awesome. And so when it comes to other versions and in other media, um, there have been around eight animated versions of Pepper uh, in Marvel pop culture, as well as 12 appearances in video games. I didn't even realize wow, that. Wow, like, that's a good amount. As a lot, yeah. And that's just in English. That's not including different you know, versions of her. Um, but we're just going to concentrate on a single variant that stands out among them, uh, especially with modern day fans. And that's the Pepper of Earth 32938, which is, of course, what if? And so, uh, yeah, just a quick recap. She was only featured in two episodes, more so in the What If Killmonger Rescued Tony Stark episode, where she's voiced by Beth Hoyt. And I think she died? She died in that one? Or I... was that the other Killmonger one? I don't remember which one he went crazy, but... I know he killed Tony... St- oh, if rescued Tony Stark. Yeah. Oh, man, I forget. Yeah, I forget. I haven't watched... But can you yeah. imagine? It's also been two years since we've seen What If. That's... Oh, my god. And it was supposed to be... Because it was supposed to be this year. Oh, my god. Yeah, and so it's going to be... It's going to be three years since we last saw the show when before we get the new uh, season. But, uh, but, yeah, so that's the other... That's the most modern version of the character we've seen, but it's still a variant. So, you know, doesn't count, but counts, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean... I don't think we even need to discuss it, but the future of the character in the MCU, <laughs> she ain't coming back. No. She gone. She doesn't need to. She gone. She does. She doesn't need to. Yeah, if I she agree. doesn't further the story. Yeah. Why would she Not show even a up? cameo, you don't think? I mean, sure, a cameo, but why would Gwyneth Paltrow waste her time? <laughs> I know, she doesn't even remember. It's a half a day's work, 100%, but it's also like. She doesn't even remember which movies she's in. So. Exactly. <laughs> Who is she going to motivate? 
Riri. <laughs> I mean, there's more people. There's probably someone that can motivate her. I mean, she already got Shuri a bit. Shuri. <laughs> Rhodey can mo- motivate her. <laughs> I mean, not now. <laughs> Until we get the real one back. <laughs> I know. Dang, man. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's I, uh, She would... Let me gather my thought for a second. She <laughs> would be the most logical, but I also think she is the least likely because it's Gwyneth Paltrow. Yes. But yes. that would be the only instance that I would expect to see her. I don't think she has enough motive to someone. The only person I think like, pers- like personally, like not even being an Iron Man or whatever, yeah. I think she would have more like, I feel like she would have more motivational power to peter parker than she would to yeah riri or something that makes sense sure yeah yeah yeah. i could see that yeah especially this version because like riri idolized tony in a way but i don't even know if he not necessarily but his tech his tech yeah exactly that's exactly right and then peter is more of the person they've shared the screen together sure like yeah there's no actual personal connection yes yeah, I so. could see that for sure. Yeah, so I am now... She's s- dead. Salute, God. salute to her. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Gamora all over again. <laughs> yeah, she ain't coming back. Um, so, yeah, she has definitely set sail. Uh, almost was. So, so funny enough, uh, Rachel McAdams what was you- John Favreau's first choice to play <laughs> Pepper Potts. Can you him. imagine? Don't blame him. Instead of Gwyneth Paltrow putting Rachel McAdams in all those scenarios and then somebody else is Christine That Palmer. I do actually see, though. Yeah. Out of, out of all the almost was sure. there's some times where you're like, I don't know about that one. Yeah. But I can see... 100%. See, uh, see Rachel McAdams yeah. there. But she, yeah. I also can't see anyone else doing Christine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now it's like, well, yeah. now I don't know. <laughs> the dynamic is there. And so she initially turned down the role. Uh, when she was first, you know, offered it. But of course, you know, she did pretty well considering she did come back as Christine. It's okay. She's loved in every universe. Yeah, it's for- fine. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> um, in Doctor Strange. But of course, you know, we've discussed this before. We don't think we'll see her again either. Uh, at least, you know, maybe a cameo in, in Doctor Strange 3. But nah, but yeah, that Chris- ship is passed. Yeah, I think she's also passed because she's married and all that good stuff. I, th- I just think, yeah, like... When you she have a line time. that's like, I will love you in every universe. Yeah. You got it. You can't. You can't just, <laughs> yeah. Then There's you, no topping it. <laughs> if you bring her, if you bring the bed, it's like, okay, well, what does that line freaking mean? Yeah, then? exactly. It becomes a throwaway. Yeah. So, uh, so, so Rachel McAdams, that, that would have been interesting, but yeah, it's, it's, they're both fantastic actresses and it's great that we had them both in the MCU. Um, suggested readings. So, this was kind of tough because it's kind of like, well, there's only so much of this character, but I will suggest both 2010 and 2020s uh, solo titles for Rescue. Um, the older version uh, released by powerhouse Kelly Sue DeConnick, as well as Andrea Moody. Uh, and then the second more recent one from Dana Schwartz, Jason Burroughs, Scott Hanna, and Pete Pat. <laughs> Pantas, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Pantazis. Pantazis? Yeah. Yeah. Pantazis? Pantazis. Uh, no, no. Don't um, to me. <laughs> it's, yeah, the, the, the first series is only a one shot. It's a pretty quick, quick read, but you get a really great, great vibe of um, rescue and, and her purpose. And then the 2021, yeah, it's, it follows, huh, it's kind of heartbreaking because it does feature a ghost of happy. Uh, it's two issues long, but again, it, it really carves out the the Pepper Potts that is the more modern day version. Um, then, of course, uh, 2014's Superior Iron Man from Tom Taylor, Yildre Sinar, and Guru EFX. And, uh, you know, last but not least, honorable mentions for not only the classic Iron Man issues, especially Tales of Suspense, but Iron Man Volume 5. And so that's kind of where we see more of the Pepper and Tony that a lot more people may be familiar with um, as far as the dynamic goes. Uh, but yeah, some some reads for you guys. And uh, that's it. 
that's the end of the show. Oh my gosh, Pepper Potts. Peppa Potts. So thanks for listening, guys. Uh, next episode. So yeah, you know, as we mentioned with Secret Invasion, uh, the finale is right around the corner. So we're going to focus and fully discuss that series uh, in our next mini Marvel, as well as any post SDCC Marvel related news that pops up. Woo! A we are Groot salute to Joe Liz, Ashley, Andrew, Eve, Laura, Andrea, Robin, Ed, Katie, Melanie, Nats, Jenny, Ariel, Claire, Sherry, and the Rock Nerd. Follow us on social at STRKC and TRST. And if you like what you hear, review, rate, and subscribe. Nice. Yeah. Once again, <laughs> thanks for listening, y'all. We will catch you in the next See one. See you later. Bye. Bye. Tony. Look at me. We're gonna be okay. You can rest now.